What's going on everybody? SLB coming at you with another video review and this is the moment I've been waiting for. I know it's taken me a while to get here and I apologize. And I know other people have done this review but it's my turn to do it. And I'm talking about Zeta Toys Kronos. And this is their combined Superion, their take on Superion. And let's take a quick look at the packaging. Let's take a quick look at the artwork on these boxes. This is the back of the boxes showing you the combined look of Kronos. And I know a lot of people throw away their boxes and I am not one of them, I keep all my boxes. And this is a reason why I keep my boxes. This artwork is beautiful. I really wish they would have done a poster of this so I could hang the poster up. Once I get more shelves in my room, I'm going to display him, Kronos Superion, in combined form with this behind it. I think this artwork is simply stunning and it needs to be displayed. And that's all I'm gonna say about the artwork. Let's get into the figure and see what the figure looks like in hand. So here we have Zeta Toys, Kronos, or Superion all combined up and right out of the bat, right out of the get-go, I'm gonna say it right now, this guy is amazing. Easily one of my favorite toys one of my best purchases. I'll go more into detail how I feel about him and my final thoughts towards the end of the video. This is how we're gonna do this review. We're gonna go from head to toe. We're gonna go over the sculpt and the articulation all at once. You know, we're gonna go over the head, articulation, sculpt, arms, articulation, sculpt, all that stuff, top to bottom. I'm gonna try to keep this video short, but let's get right into that head sculpt. So starting out, let's start with the head and the head sculpt you're given two options. You're given the toy accurate head sculpt, or you can give him a cartoon accurate head sculpt. But if I were to pick one version over the other, it's very close, but I'm gonna have to go with the toy accurate head sculpt. I just like it a little bit better. It's got a little bit more character than the cartoon accurate head sculpt. So before we get into the look and the articulation and all that, let me tell you about the gimmick that this is supposed to have. If you do turn him around backwards, there's a compartment back here for batteries and a button back here. His eyes are supposed to light up and he's supposed to have phrases that he says, unfortunately on mine, that's not the case. So that's kind of a bummer. So if anybody that watches this knows, leave a comment in the comment section down below if there's a way I can personally rectify that or if I have to contact the seller and let them know this is an issue. And like I said, the choice for my pick is very close. It's a very small margin. I just like the toy accurate head better because of the more paint details and the overall molding of the helmet. Yes, the roundedness of the cartoon accurate is nice. It just doesn't cleanse my palate. I like the squareness and the extra molded detail in the toy accurate head as compared to the cartoon accurate head. The articulation is the same on both heads, so he can look down that far, he can look up that far, and he can do a full 360 that way. It's just a peg in the hole. That's all it is. It's not a ball joint, which is kind of a bummer. I would I would have preferred a ball joint just so you can get some more range. It is what it is though. Also, on the cartoon accurate head, for some strange reason, the antenna are on springs. I don't know why. They don't store anywhere. Well, you can store it if you have them in the individual bots, but it there's enough clearance to where this doesn't matter. So why these are on springs, I have no idea. But on the toy accurate head, for some reason, these antenna, you can turn them and they do come apart like that. And that's just weird. I don't know why they did that, but it's a thing you can do if you choose to do it. Another thing about the different head sculpts is the antenna on the cartoon accurate head. Those are the mustard colored plastic, kind of like the thighs, whereas or as on the uh, toy accurate head, they're black plastic painted that mustard colored. And I would have preferred if they would have just kept it both the same. I would have preferred the mustard colored plastic over the paint. It's just over time and chipping. If you've noticed paint blemishes, it's going to show. It's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So that is it for the head. Let's move on to the arms. 
So moving on to the arms and shoulders and everything, I seriously put this off. I, this is why I didn't do this in the individual limbs. Why did it show off the combined arm look? Because I wanted to give you a feel of what it looks like all combined. I wanted you to be just as surprised as I was. And I was pleasantly surprised. Seeing these arms combined for the first time in their limb mode and having them connected to Superion, it just blows me away. The proportions for the arms are great. From shoulder to, to you know thigh, you know, where the wrist are and everything, I think that's a good length proportionately for him to have a nice silhouette and a nice profile. Let's go over the articulation. Let's, a cool thing about Superion is that these wings here, they can move to give you ample room to do as much articulation as you want, which is great. I gotta bring him forward a little bit here to give you the full idea, but he can do a full 360 on a very nice, tight ratchet. That is so nice and so tight and so satisfying. It makes me happy to have that ratchet. It can also go out that far. And again, a very nice, tight ratchet. It's just so nice to have that because when he holds his gun, the ratchet's strong enough to where the arm's not going to flop around left and right. Let's bring that back down about there. Uh, there is a swivel right here above the elbow here which is nice. The kibble on the individual limbs is kind of in the way, so you can't go fully outwards, but there is there are ways to manipulate it to where you can. Be cautionary when you're doing it. There's also a very nice tight elbow. Unfortunately, with the wings, you cannot get a full 90, but since these are the aerobots and the wings are detachable, like so, you can get a full 90 degree bend at those elbows and that is awesome and even the ratchets and the elbows are nice and tight so that when he's holding his gun if you just have him in the 90 degree elbow pose holding the gun the arm is not going to drop and i think that is great let's move that back down like so get that and that's it for the arms let's go on to the chest area and then we'll go to thighs and hands and so on and so forth so here we have the chest area. <laughs> I, it's a nice chest, I'm not gonna lie. You got some nice clear plastic up here in this area here with some nice molar detail behind it. You got some a nice area right here for a nice Autobot symbol. And hey, Nate, I'm gonna put a sticker on it. He knows how much I hate my stickers, how much I hate putting stickers on things. He needs a giant Autobot symbol right here in the center of his chest. Moving on throughout, you got some nice red paint and the wings up here. Some gorgeous silver up here with some nice candy sparkle up here as well on both sides. A little bit more red paint in this area in the app section here. I'm going to be completely honest. All throughout, these guys have been lacking in the paint department. If you're up for it, if you want to do it, I highly recommend you do repro labels for, if they're ever going to do them for this guy. He could use them. Or if you want, do some panel lining on your own. It just looks in this area, especially here and here, it just looks very bland and it could use a bit of paint to stand out a little more. Like some nice red paint in this area, some black paint in here, some black paint. Just give it some definition right there. I think would look great. But since we're in the chest area, let's talk about the waist swivel, which there is one, which is a nice ratchet can do. Oh, full. Three. Oh, this backpack. Oh, the backpack. This happens all the time. I'd like to take a moment right now out of this video review to thank my sponsor for this video. No one. Let's watch Josh struggle. Let's watch SLB struggle with the backpack, huh? Yeah, I'll worry about that later. Let's just finish turning him around. There we go. Let me fix that really quickly. All right, all better, all clean in the back. So we did the waist swivel. He does have an app crunch as well. You can only get two clicks right there. So it's not a deep app crunch. It's barely anything, but let's get him back. There we go. 
that the backpack just does not want to stay on today. So that's it for the chest area. Let's move on to the hands. So I went ahead and took the wing off of Fireflight here just to give you a better view of the hand here. And the hand is very nicely done. Let's take a look at that. Look at that hand. Oh, that's gorgeous. And I want to give a shout out to John Pollock. He said, in a, he wrote a comment in one of my videos, in your combined mode vid, will you give your thoughts about the proportions of the head to the hands? No one else that I've watched have shared what they think. And I'm gonna say this, I think the fingers are too long. Maybe it's just the hands, also, the palms and everything else. I think it's the proportions for the hand to the head are too big. You're not supposed to be able to do this in real life. Yes, they're robots. Yes, it's a toy. Yes, they're cartoons. I get it. I understand it. I just think that that is a little far-fetched. If the head would have been a little bit bigger or the hands would have been a little bit smaller, the proportions would have been a little bit better. So, John, thanks for the comment in the comment section. Let me know if I, that answered your question for you. So, moving on. On. Let's talk about the sculpt and the sculpt on these the hands are nice Let me point out right now that this silver and gunmetal right here This is a gunmetal plastic and the silver paint right here. It's more of a gunmetal gray. But it's got a nice shine to it I love the way these looks with the red lines right here I think that's great and in all honesty I think that's enough for the hands not too much not too little it's a nice maybe a skosh of panel lining right here but not too much I think that's just enough for the hands so let's go over the articulation for the hands the wrist is on a swivel you can do a full 360 right there the hands can also do that right there you can bend that far you can bend that far as well let's turn them around right here the thumb right here there's a hinge right here at the base of the thumb as well as a hinge here and a hinge there and the fingers it's just like Bruticus's they has Bruticus hands as well can go out to that which is very unnatural but there you have that and there's a hinge at both knuckles so you can close them up and get a nice fist out of it too so there you have that moving on let's get into let's just move over here so moving on to the crotchal area and the thighs it's a nice looking crotch i'll give them that you got some nice clear plastic right here i think this is red this matches the chest area and i think this is red plastic got some nice molded detail behind it uh, got some silver or that gunmetal gray paint at the top right here a little bit of molded detail in the crotchal area uh, let me get the arms out of the way here so we can focus in. The skirts here are can hinge upwards and outwards, which is great. I think is awesome. So you can get those out of the way and you can see the hips right there because his hips don't lie. So there you have that. Moving on to the back section here. The skirts back here also do hinge upwards and outwards just to give you some better articulation on that aspect and i gotta bring this arm down to do this properly i don't know how well you can see it but the hips themselves are on a slider so to help you balance him out and everything and i think that's just great that is a great idea on their part and i love that slide those back and actually let's keep it forward a little bit just to there we go just to balance them out so there you have that so let's go over the articulation here let's get the hip skirts out of the way Whew, this is going to be rough uh, hips can go forward legs can go forward that far unfortunately uh, it's very nerve-wracking to have it up there can go back that far as well and there goes the hip skirt and there goes the backpack and let's clean that up really quickly let's let's let me clean that up 
All right, we're back. So let's get into more of that. Just one last bit of articulation for the hips here. It can go out that far. And that's so satisfying. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Whew, that's a workout too, man, I'll tell you. These guys got some heft to them. And I'm not sure if I pointed this out, but let's talk about the thighs. Got some nice silver paint here in the thighs, and this could definitely use some panel lining all throughout. It's just that bland mustard color, and it's not very appealing. I think if they would have had some black lines in there, it would have looked it would it would look top notch. So that's it for that. Let's get to the knees and show you that really quickly. So we're, gonna, we're not going to spend too much time on the knees here. We've got some silver paint here, that mustard color right up there. This is painted on there. I'm going to say the connection ports for the knees connecting the, you know, the leg, the shins right here to the thighs. This connection port is so sturdy. It's amazing. I know that Toy World, which eventually became Zeta and their Bruticus, I know they kind of did different things each time. And I love that about them. And I think this is top notch. This is money. It's so secure. It's great. And let's get into the articulation really quickly. You're going to have to move the kibble down a little bit to get him a full bend, which is a, kind of a bummer, but not too much. So let's see how well we can do this. Oh, such a tight bend. Oh, look at that. Look at that. For a combined mode form, that is a lot of articulation. Oh my God. And you got this bit right here. That is just unbelievably awesome. Oh, that is amazing. That's one of the things that blows my mind about this figure is just that in itself. Oh, that's awesome. So let's get them cleaned up and let's go on to the feet. Home stretch, people. Here we are. We're at the feet, bottom floor, ground level. Let's do this. As you can tell, the feet look phenomenal. Nice red paint up top here, nice silver paint throughout. And this does not need any panel lining. This looks great. Get some more silver paint on this side here. And I don't know how well you can see it, but up top right here, he's got some more silver paint there. On the inside, he's got some silver paint also, so that is great. That is awesome. He's having a bit of a stability problem right now. There we go. Just scoot him back a little bit. Uh, I haven't been able to feel any die cast on the feet, which is kind of a bummer. It would have given him some nice heft at the bottom to kind of make him more stable, or even some friction pads like I know TFC did uh, some friction pads that, that just like had an adhesive side you could put on top so he's not slipping and sliding everywhere. Needless to say let's go over the articulation. Toes don't have a lot of bend to them just a couple clicks there. Nice articulated ankle pivot right there. No swivel at all. Kind of a bummer but that's what you get. That is it for the feet. That's it for articulation, people. Let's rearrange the camera, get into some comparisons. I'm sorry, I'm kind of shooting the gun here. I forgot to show you what the, how he holds his weapon. So inside the hands, it's you got a slot right here for the hand. You got a rectangular peg right here. Pegs in very securely. Wrap the fingers around. Wrap the heat thumb, and there you have him holding his gun, like so. And like I said previously, there's absolutely no weight to that gun whatsoever, so you don't have to worry about it falling over. The ratchets in the shoulders and the elbows are tight enough to where if he's holding it straight out, it's not going to fall over, and you don't have to worry about him letting go. So now, let's get into those comparisons. Here he is next to Combiner Wars Superion. Here he is next to MP10 Optimus Prime. Here he is next to a G1 Defensor. And here he is with some other third-party combiners. On the right there you have Transform Mission Menasaur. On the left you have TFC's 
Poseidon or their Piranicon. And in the middle, just to give you a nice scale, another scale, T, uh, Unique Toys Onslaught. So that is it for comparisons. Let's get into the final thoughts. So my final thoughts for Zeta Toys, Kronos, their Superion. This guy blows me away. He is amazing. The nitpicks I have, things don't tab well together. The backpack, some of the some things just don't tab together. And I think Zeta should take that into effect going forward because I know they got uh, Raiden coming out and Predaking. I love the playability concept of it because you can give him the toy head. You can give him the cartoon head. You can even take off the wings to give it a more clean look. Yes, he is kibble on the arms and the back of the legs and the backpack. It's the aerial bots. They've always had kibble. It's what makes him him. You can tell that these are planes that combine to form a giant robot. That's what makes it superior. That is one of those unique characteristics of it. To People can look at it and go, oh, that's him. He's going to get repo labeled up. There are some areas where it could use some TLC, some panel lining, some stickers, but overall, this guy is awesome. For the price you're getting him for, all combined, everything together, you're looking for four fifty. Well worth the price. He's gonna he scales great with MPs. He towers over other third-party combiners. And if this is the way the combiners are going from here on out, I am in a hundred percent. I'm going to go back and get Zeta Toys Bruticus. I'm in for Predaking from Zeta. I'm on the fence for Raiden, not too familiar with the character. This guy is money. He is awesome. If you, like I said, get this figure, I highly recommend it for your collection. And that's all I got to say about Zeta Toys Kronos. This is SLB. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Any comments, please leave it in the comments section down below there. Hit me up on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. All that information will be in the description down below. This is SLB, and this has been my review of Zeta Toys Kronos. And this is SLB saying, my childhood hates me.